Okay, well, we'll get started here again. And uh, I want to just, uh, just finish what I've got here on this side of the board here. I'm just looking at it myself here to begin with. Um, this, um, this process of the, of, of actually life, the process of life correcting itself is called homeostasis. And homeostasis is such that uh, on the, if you look at this graph here, here's, here's the, the, the central, the uh, sympathetic nervous system, here's the parasympathetic nervous system, the two arms of our autonomic nervous system. These are the kind of the uh, control agents for keeping us uh, on, the, on the straight and narrow. <laughs> and the straight and narrow is this, is this line down the center here. But as you can see, what happens uh, in, in life is that, uh, I don't know anybody who's, whose life is not a uh, repetitive uh, example of wandering away from the center line and then being brought back in again. That's the way the physiology of the human organism works, is by uh, coordinating the information from both of these arms of our autonomic nervous system. I mean, it's amazing uh, when, you, when you see uh, a cell or a living organism that it has the capacity to uh, actually uh, make these alterations uh, right in the middle of, middle of life. We all make these adjustments in our life. It's, um, it's like if, if your heart rate is high, your body is going to, your uh, autonomic nervous system is going to sense that and it tends to bring your heart rate back down again. If your heart rate gets too low, uh, like in this case here where you have a predominance of parasympathetic tone, which is the braking of the body, the brakes of the, of the engine of the machine, then uh, the parasympathetic nervous system um, is a little more active than it should be, so the sympathetic nervous system brings it back up to baseline again. So we have this process going on in our body. God has uh, in, in, uh, dwelt that in all measures of life that we have this uh, capability to adjust. And we do that adjustment through our heart. And it, that's, that's the, the um, brain in our heart. It's our spiritual brain. And the, the heart literally makes these transformative changes that, that affect all of, all of our body and, and also affect all of our emotions as well as affecting our thoughts, our higher center uh, of the brain, the spiritual side of the brain. The, the heart has the capacity to make alterations in any one of those areas of our, you know, of our lives. And there is, an, there is an ideal, and that ideal is, is where the brain and heart uh, together are what is called coherent. They're, they're beating at the same tune, so to speak. And, uh, you know, when we talked a couple weeks ago about the substance of faith, and that uh, faith is the uh, language that... that um, goes on uh, in the, the communication between the spiritual kingdom and our physical kingdom. So the way you talk to the spiritual kingdom is through the substance of faith. That's the language. And, and um, our ability to do that, uh, to uh, talk to the spiritual kingdom, to have an effect on the spiritual kingdom, uh, because this is an interchange. Remember, I, I mentioned the physicist at uh, Princeton that said this is an interactive uh, uh, universe that we live in. We're not, we're not uh, 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 total victims. We, we can interact, and we both receive information, and we also transmit information to the spiritual kingdom from our physical position here in this universe. And what we're trying to accomplish, we're trying to maximize the effect that we have, we're trying to maximize that power from within, um, we're trying to maximize the uh, power that was referred to in our, in our verse in uh, Second Peter, uh, where it talks about the divine nature. We have this divine nature. If you have Christ, you've got this divine nature. Well, if that divine nature is in here, then how do we, how do we have it manifest itself? And the way that benign, that uh, divine nature manifests itself is when uh, 
we maximize the ability to uh, have our faith flow out of our spirit. And in order to do that, it runs through the heart and it involves the brain. And there is such a thing as heart-brain coherence. That's, uh, give, you a, give you a perfect example, um, you can be praying for your neighbor that your neighbor gets over pneumonia and at the same time the neighbor on the other side uh, just broke your fence and you're angry and uh, in misery over the fact that you'd like to go over and break your neighbor's fence to get back at him. Uh, that's, that's the heart, maybe, maybe having a, a, a method of information that, that is uh, uh, in God's will for the neighbor to get healed but if in your brain you're thinking negative thoughts, you're thinking resentful thoughts, you're thinking angry thoughts, you've just negated what it is that your heart is feeling. And I think I know uh, in my own personal uh, analysis it's, it's true and I'm sure that uh, it's probably true for most uh, human beings and that is uh, the fact that we uh, uh, don't spend enough time where we're in this state of coherence. That's when we're thinking and our thoughts, our emotions, and our feelings are all on the same page. Now, if you've, got, if you've got processes that have been going on for 10 years or 20 years or 20 days that have developed into these reflexic, these habit addictive forms of intoxicating emotions, and you've got those kind of things going on that are going on down here in this, in this part of your brain, the reflexic, the, the reactive part of your brain, you can be having all the good thoughts and wishful thinking that comes out of your heart that you can muster up and it has absolutely no avail. I mean, do you, you have to have wondered uh, to your own self, have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror again and wondered, why aren't more of my prayers answered? <laughs> or why don't I have the capability to uh, manifest the fullness of this divine nature? And what I'm saying is that to a great extent, I think the reason that we, we don't is because our heart and brain are not in a state of coherence. They're not on the same page. You can't be loving a neighbor on one side of you and hating a neighbor on the other side of you and think that you're doing anything but just canceling out whatever effect you're going to have on the spiritual kingdom. It just, it's not going to happen. Uh, so it, the, this the ability to maintain homeostasis uh, is, is, has been defined scientifically as maintaining our heart intelligence. Our heart intelligence. And our heart intelligence is that which uh, creates coherency between our heart and our brain. And when our heart and brain are coherent, that's when we have the mind of Christ. That is the mind of Christ. And as I said uh, uh, a few weeks ago, the mind of Christ involves all four of these realms. It's, it's uh, you know, all four dimensions. It's not just our spirit. The mind of Christ involves our body, our soul, our spirit, and our heart. And for us to manifest the fullness of that which God has given us, this divine nature, we have to come to a point uh, in our lives that, that our heart and our brain are becoming coherent. Well, how does that coherency occur? Well, it, it gives us the example right here in, in 2 Peter. It occurs through the Word. It occurs through the Word. And the Word is transmitted through the water. And, and the water is the vehicle, the conduit through which information travels. And um, at the, at the very substance of, of everything below all of this, in, including the, the heart-brain coherence, is Jesus. He is the substance of faith. He is, the, he is that term, the hypostasis. He is that term that represents uh, um, the uh, substance of faith in the definition of Hebrews 11.1. So, in order to activate that, we have to come into this state of coherence. Well, what, what does that look like? Uh, coherence looks like, looks like this. Here, here, is, here is a, uh, you know, I, I, I gave the example before of what, how a demonstration for faith, I'll use it again. 
And, and here, is, here is God's word and God's will out here in the universe that he's injected at creation. And his will is for Mark to have a tiger. Well, I come to a point in my life that I begin to desire a tiger. I know that that's, I know that I know that I know that God wants me to have a tiger. So I start thinking and focusing on a tiger. And if that is consistent with God's will for me, those two things combine in the universe and out of the spirit world drops the physical reality of a tiger. That's how you bring something out of the spirit world into the physical world. That's how we bring healing to an ill person. We bring it, if it's out of the spiritual world, into the physical world. All of the promises of God that are in the spiritual world, you bring them into the, into the physical world through the implementation of faith. And faith is that substance that connects these two. And that substance, again, is what? It's Jesus. He is what connects those two things in the universe. And when those two things become connected, then we develop a physical tiger in the physical kingdom. Um, this, this isn't just spiritual talk. I mean, theoretical physicists today will tell humanity that if you will create the reality of your life that you create is exactly uh, co coincides and coincident with whatever you put your focus of attention of your mind and heart on. If you put the focus of attention of your brain and your heart on an element in the spiritual kingdom, that's what you will bring in to yourself. That's the power of attraction. That's that whole attraction thing. Of course, a lot of people take those principles and take them away from the source, which is our God, and take them away from our substance, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus. But it's, it is an operational thing in our universe. And we can call those things into action. And the way we call that into action, from a, phys a physicist will tell you that what brings something out of the spiritual kingdom that that which cannot be seen into the physical kingdom is when two sources of information, here's one, here's one source of information here, and here's another source of information over here. When those two sources of information come together and they are coherent, as you can see, they're, the same, they're, the, they're resonating, they're at the same, they have the same peaks, they have the same troughs, that's God's will coinciding with what I'm asking him which is my desired will when those two things come together you will bring out of the spiritual kingdom that which you want to see in the physical kingdom that becomes the reality and that reality becomes manifested through this state of coherence this is called a standing wave physicists will say that a standing wave will do just this thing. It, it takes something out of a wave form and makes it drop into a particle. That, that's the formation of matter occurs out of nothing you can see and it forms matter. That's, that's the process that I'm talking about. And that process is no different when we're praying for something that exists in the spiritual kingdom. Okay, so what would that be? That would be uh, any, any form of healing. Anything that we can't see is in the spiritual kingdom. If we want to bring that into our lives or into the lives of someone else, the way we do that is to make sure that, that our resonating frequency is the same resonating frequency as God's. When those waves come together, it creates a standing wave. And it's been shown in the laboratory that a standing wave will literally bring something out of the spiritual kingdom in to the physical kingdom. It will literally bring a tiger into existence out of the spiritual kingdom. Is, is that, is that uh, understandable? So, and, and this information flow it's of great significance. This information flow is when, is when these vibratory frequencies of information are going in opposite directions. You're send, we're sending our desires and our prayers out into the universe and God's injecting his information and energy. He's already injected it into the universe. And when that comes into uh, coherence with ours, it becomes a reality. 
And that, 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 that process is uh, uh, precipitated by and facilitated by, and the substance of that process is faith, which is, which is Jesus. Depends on where we put our focus of attention. Now, here, say here's, here's God's will here, and, and here is God's will for you to get healed is this vibratory frequency of information right here. But here's the state, here's the state of your mind, your brain. Say this is the state of your heart, but this is the state of your brain. Well, you can see there's a difference between this wave and this wave. The two aren't going to match up. They're not going to form a standing wave. And we know that standing waves literally have the capacity to change not only the protein structure of our physical bodies on a molecular level, but it also has the potential to literally reset by turning on and off our genetic structure. So here's this information coming at opposite ends. It's, it's, no, uh, it's no small item to realize that the information carrying capacity of life is contained in DNA. And DNA is is contained contains two different strands there's two different strands and you know that the way DNA is DNA is not parallel it's structured in the human body in an anti parallel situation so you have information going up this arm of the DNA you have information coming down and when those two arms of information become resonant, become coherent, that's when we develop a standing wave and you can literally change the genetic structure, the expression of the genes in your DNA through this interchange of, of information. And that's, that's what we uh, attempt to do as, we're, as we are praying for healing as we're praying for any one of the promises or desires that we have and that God has for us. The, the other factor um, is the fact that the faith being the substance of uh, faith, being the substance that we're talking about, substance can either be re, uh, accessed or transmitted through one of two ways. It can either be transmitted through a straight line here that's, that's called analog. That's information uh, uh, management that has a constant stream. It would be like if I had, uh, let's see here. If I uh, shine that light, there's a constant stream of light between here and you, correct? Constant stream of light. Okay, that, that's this. Now, I don't, I don't know anybody who said this, but it's a revelation that I've had, and that that's not the way the universe handles faith. Faith is not dispensed to human beings uh, in the form of a straight line. It's, it's, this is analog. We live in a digital world. A digital world, meaning the information can either be this or it can be that. A digital world is pulsed. And the reason I bring that up uh, is because I've often uh, wondered myself when when praying for something and and, and uh, thinking that that my heart and my brain were coherent that I had that side of the equation was covered but yet I didn't see the manifestation of what it was that I was praying for I think that if this is the way information is transmitted in the universe from God to us then it's available all the time you just reach out and grab it it's there all the time it's like a running hose you just reach out and grab water well, I might get run out of here on a rail for saying this, but that's not the way faith is managed in this universe we live in. The universe we live in is digital, and this is the way faith is managed. And I, I bring this up because how many times in the Bible does it talk about have patience and, and have perseverance? Well, if this is the way information is given to us from God, and this is the reason I think that a lot of Christians lose their faith is because we think this is the way information is transmitted. So when we reach out for it and it's not there, we think, well, no dice. It's not there. I'll give up on it. I'm not going to have belief in it anymore because I've grabbed for it. I've done everything that I know how to do and it's not there, so I'm going to give up on it. When in fact, 
faith is not uh, accessible to us in that form. This is the form that faith is accessible in, which means that I might reach out and try to grab a perfectly willful thing that God has for me in my life, and I come out with nothing. It's because it's not a constant stream. It's a, it's a, it's a stream that is digital. Faith is digital. What that means for us is that if, it, if at first you don't succeed, <laughs> you try and try again. You, know, you, you don't just pray for something once or try to invoke the name of Jesus or, or a promise or a, uh, a part of God's will for your life and, and have it not uh, manifest itself in the form of reality and give up on it. Because that's not, the way, that's not the way God constructed the universe. This is the way he constructed the universe. Now, does that have anything to do with anything? Well, let me tell you that uh, uh, Albert Einstein, it was thought that, that light traveled like this right here. Until Albert Einstein said, no, light travels digitally. It travels in packets of information. Those packets are called quanta. That's where the whole field of quantum physics began and those quanta of energy are just like this they're little packets of energy and look what that knowledge in terms of our management and living in the physical world has meant to humanity it's given us the capability to use electricity this it's, it's behind it's the technology and knowledge behind the internet and all the electronics that we're using today so I think if we know that this is the way faith operates Knowing that, and I would challenge each and every one of you to think about this, don't, don't accept it on my word, but just think about this and see if this isn't the way you find faith working in your own life and in your universe and read the Bible and see if the Bible says anything different now that you know this to be the case. That you, it's perfectly acceptable. You may be in, right smack dab in the center of God's will and reach out for Him and find that he's not there and rather than give up faith and turn around and walk away from it never 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 ever give up <laughs> because for whatever whatever reason uh, the digital packets of faith that are being uh, manifest in our universe uh, it may it may not have been the uh, the time that w that it was accessible to you but don't ever don't ever give up and now, in medicine, I saw, I saw uh, people giving up all the time way, 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 way too early. And I would beg, borrow, and plead with people, don't give up. Keep, keep praying for that which you want to see happen. Put your total focus of attention on it. Focus, focus on God's Word and, and uh, allow God's Word to make manifest in your life all of those divine provisions that He's done for us. And if we do that in, in, in earnestness and, and we uh, uh, open ourselves up to the, the fact that uh, we don't ever give up, we, we continue persevering, uh, and we have patience, then those qualities are going to pay off because we will see the reality. Uh, and most of the time this occurs, and I'm sure you can attest to this in your own life, it occurs a lot of times that when you're questioning something and you're in, falling into a stage of doubt, you're wondering if it's really true or not, or if you have any substance to your faith and you're about ready to walk away from it, and that which you wanted all of a sudden is there. You find it, and f thankfully you didn't walk away from it. So this... this, this uh, is, I, I think, uh, important as we look at how we are to ac access this power of faith uh, that, we, that we have in this universe that we live in. Um, let's see. Okay. I wanted to, to share with you I, uh, the... Uh, probably the, the, the premier research institution in the country today that has to do with looking at the science and, and of the spiritual heart is uh, uh, an organization that I mentioned a couple times ago. I mentioned it's the, uh, the, uh, heart, the Institute for Heart Math. It's in uh, California. 
and HeartMath have done studies for since it was uh, since its inception back in the early 90s when HeartMath was formed, and and they're the ones that study coherence. And I, I've looked at their studies of coherence and, and what they talk about in terms of the heart resonating with the brain or the heart not resonating with the brain and the effects that it has on disease and illness in mankind. And I'm beginning to see, you know, they're not using the, the terminology of, of the Bible. They're not using the terminology of, of the spiritual kingdom that, that you and I would as, as practicing Christians because they, they don't have, you know, they're not practicing Christians. But they have a phenomenal amount of, of information about the um, structure and function of our heart in our heart-based intelligence. And uh, I have wanted to bring to the world evidence that, we, that it is perfectly possible for us as human beings to bring our heart into a uh, position of coherence. And that when we co our heart becomes coherent with God's heart, that's when we see the manifestations that are miracles. That, that's when they happen. When our heart becomes coherent with God's heart, and I mentioned a few times ago, I mentioned compassion because Jesus had compassion. I was trying to engender in all of us to think, well, what is that feeling that we get in our heart? If we want to replicate what Jesus did in his own life, how do we, how do we replicate what he had in his own life? And uh, that, that led me into, into thinking more and, and giving more consideration to our heart-based intelligence. And I'm convinced that the Word of God is, is that which fine-tunes our heart and our brain and brings us into this element of heart-based intelligence that science says is the most optimal form of living on the planet Earth today. And I just spent an hour this afternoon talking to the founder and the head of the research department at HeartMath Institute. And I proposed to him that, uh, that I wanted to do a study showing using his instrumentation. They, have, they literally have instruments today that you can put on and it will, it will give you a printout of, of whether your heart is in a state of physiological coherence whether your heart is right here. This is physiological coherence, right on this line right here. That's what they define as heart-based intelligence. Every aspect of heart-based intelligence coincides with what the Bible says about the ideal situation and circumstance that God wants us to live in. It's what Jesus was trying to tell his disciples. He was trying to tell his disciples that, hey, the kingdom of heaven is within. It's within here. We have it within us. It's, it's not somewhere way outside of us. It's all right in here. It's, it's within us. And if we learn the ability to bring our heart into coherence with our brain, we can literally transform our own persons as well as being a conduit through which God can run his substance of faith to other people. We will see signs and wonders following us. So I, I proposed to this Dr. McCready that, that I, I wanted some of his instrumentation uh, and I didn't know if he's going to hang the phone up on me or what he was going to do uh, because in science most of the time they're not too open to consideration of, of specifically designated Christian based kinds of things but he spent over an hour on the telephone and was totally, he said I'm totally mesmerized by, by his, not his word, that's mine. Uh, not, uh, he was, he was uh, quite uh, taken back by what I was talking about using my terminology. It was totally consistent with his terminology. His, his statement was, he said, Mark, you and I are resonating. <laughs> and he's, a, he's an open, non, he's not, uh, not a Christian. And unfortunately, he's not a Christian because he doesn't know anything about Christianity. He was raised in a, in a Methodist church and raised in a condemning, uh, religious-based, uh, condemning, uh, guilt-ridden and shame-stricken church. And that's what his concept of Christianity is. He said, man, you got it all wrong. Wait a minute. We're, we're this, this state that you're talking about, that you've spent your life studying, this heart intelligence and this heart-brain coherence, that is the exact state that Jesus was teaching his disciples to live in. And you're teaching humanity how to do that through your instrumentation, but you're taking it away from the main source. I want to bring it back to the source and see what kind of results we get. Would you help me design an experiment? 
And he is. He was more than happy. He's going to design an experiment, and I'm going to, I'm going to set up. We've got th three groups of individuals set up, and we're going to have about 20 people in each group, and we're going to do a study using heart-brain coherence studies, uh, using all of his uh, computer technology and research department, and I'm going to prove to the world that this position of heart intelligence was not invented by heart math or any other scientific organization. This is what Jesus was teaching his disciples. When you begin to think, act, and feel in unison, in a coherent state, I can run my faith, will come right through you. But if it's not in that state, then my, my, uh, there, the faith is going to be obstructed by one of those red clamps on that board over there. And we want to remove those red clamps so that we can have the fullness of this run through our lives. And I'm, I'm ready to see some... Um, manifestation of this it's as Jesus said if you if you preach my word if you give the gospel message then signs and wonders are going to follow you and and I want to try to uh, get us all in a state of mind heart coherence so that we can begin to manifest the fullness of what uh, Christ has promised us and we can see signs and wonders that follow and the substance the, I mean the the uh, uh, the dollar bill in the spiritual world is, is faith. It, it's Jesus. And I've been waiting for some... Uh, I've actually been, been waiting for a spiritual uh, authority of mine to give me the okay to begin to uh, say what I've known for years and people have told me all of my life, although I've been embarrassed about it and haven't um, taken it to its full manifestation, is that I have the gift of healing. I have a gift of healing. I've seen it, I mean, it's been recorded, it's been on, in ICUs and all kinds of things. And I'm, I'm uh, making that profession yesterday in, in, or Monday, Sunday in church, um, Pastor Lawson uh, came to the same point uh, individually that he said, let's, let's uh, begin to uh, manifest our faith to its fullness through our lives. And uh, he was asking for people who wanted to be prayed for, for... Um, uh, confidence and for assurance that, that this is fully, that you believe this, that this is capable. It's, it's capable to have signs and wonders follow. It's capable to heal. And uh, I grabbed Judy and we were the first ones in line. <laughs> so we're ready to go. And I, I asked Pastor John if he minded if I brought up a faith movement tonight, that we begin to pray for one another. We begin to invoke the name of Jesus. We begin to invoke the substance of faith. Rather than talking about it, we've got a foundation built here. Now, for the rest of the time of, of these classes, I'm going to be talking more specifically about things that you and I can do on a daily basis to enhance this process. We've got a foundation now. If I started talking to you without a foundation about vibratory frequencies and all this stuff, you'd have thought, man, this guy has lost his mind. So you have to build this up. Okay, we've got it built up, and for the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about specific things that we all can do, simple things that we can all do in our lives that make us more uh, usable by God and allow the complete release of this perfected spirit that we have in us. And we can start that, uh, start that process tonight. So if anybody has uh, uh, any element of, of uh, need for their own life, uh, whether it be a, an obstacle or a stronghold of, of resentment or anger or guilt or jealousy, any of those kinds of strongholds which can be obstacles, we're going to corporately pray for those things. We're gonna, if, if, you, if you have a particular need, uh, you can ask someone sitting next to you, or there's plenty of faith-filled people here. You can lay hands on one another and, and pray for those things. If anyone has a physical affliction, it doesn't have to be any, any emotional affliction. I, all of these are injuries to the human organism. They're all injuries, whether it's uh, abuse is as much an injury as a stroke. If anybody has, a, has any kind of an autoimmune disease or any one of these disease processes that, that is uh, uh, captivating the world, we have a solution for that by uh, absolving, totally absolving any element of unworthiness, guilt, or shame and walking in the truth of God's Word. So if anyone, anyone has a particular need, um, I'd like to pray for them. 
If anybody would uh, like to lay hands on another person that, that has a prayer request, feel free to do that. Does anybody have a, a need or um, the compulsion to be prayed for? Okay. Okay. Well, do you want to come down? We'll, we'll pray for you. It certainly is, yes. One of the most common afflictions is hypothyroidism. I'd like for uh, those that aren't in our circle here to be praying um, and invoking the name of Jesus and through God's word to come into this circle so that we all might uh, manifest his goodness. And I'll start out uh, with a prayer and then uh, if you feel the, the uh, uh, unction from the spirit to participate, then I invite you to do so. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just uh, give you uh, all the praise and glory. We come with uh, glad hearts, Lord, that you have given us the capability to completely implement the perfected uh, spirit, the perfected faith of Jesus that resides in each and every one of us believers, Lord. We thank you for that, and we just invoke the name of Jesus. We invoke the, uh, your word, and we, in, with the authority of, of uh, the name of Jesus, we ask that uh, the uh, perfected faith in each and every person here is opened up and begins to infuse and diffuse out of our spirit organ into our souls so that our souls be, begin to be cleansed from emotional trauma. Our souls are uh, repaired from uh, unworthiness or guilt or shame or resentment or anger or anxiety or any obsessions or compulsions, any habits or addictions, Lord, that have taken us over and have completely captivated us and have, are, are hijacking the, the spiritual center in our body. Lord, I just ask that those things be totally loosed and totally freed in the name of Jesus, standing on his word that you would command us to do this following thing where two or more are gathered in my name, I will be there. Lord, we just ask the uh, full manifestation to bring these requests out of the spirit world into the physical reality of our bodies, Lord. Anyone who's uh, here that has a need for a physical healing, whether it be an autoimmune disease, whether it be rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, uh, cancer, any one of the, the cancers, Lord, uh, any form of the migraine headaches, uh, colitis, uh, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, any of those autoimmune diseases, Lord, we just, again, call on the name of Jesus uh, with praise and glory to you, Lord, that his uh, perfected faith will infuse the individual that has this need and that every single cell in their body will be completely immersed and surrounded by the faith, the substance of faith, which is all uh, answerable to and commanded by the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for uh, your presence here. We thank you for the ability to heal. We thank you for the fact that we can uh, preach the gospel and signs and wonders will follow. And we believe you that signs and wonders are going to follow. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I hear the Lord telling me that, that he gives total permission for, for anyone in, in this room tonight to give up any uh, of the habits or any of the addictions or any of the patterns of behavior that have become self-destructive or self-replicating or self-sustaining that you have you have no obligation to continue in that that you have the permission and the will of Jesus himself to completely eradicate those things from your life to, to walk away from them, just like taking your shoes off take the shoes off and throw them in the corner and walk away from them Lord you don't have to continue to be besieged or beleaguered by those things Lord we stand in agreement, the power of agreement, where two or three are gathered, Lord. Thank you for your presence here, Lord. Thank you for um, guiding and directing us with truth. Continue to take us into your word. Continue to take us to more truth. Continue to manifest yourself in each one of our lives, Lord. We just uh, submit all these things to you in Jesus' name with glory. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Bless <laughs> you. 
Mm-hmm. Amen. Wow. Amen. Yeah. Were you at the first or the second service? Pardon? Were you at Karis Christian? Service? Second. So next, next week we're going to start looking at, at ways that we can begin to change ourselves so that we change our level of coherence, so that we literally uh, bring this divine nature that we all have to the forefront and it becomes manifest. So we're going to get, be getting uh, uh, a lot more practical than we have been because now I think we've got a foundation of information and knowledge. We will go forth. Thank you very much. We'll plan on seeing you next week. God bless you. Thank you.